First into the tank is a way to work out like a hero. Hey Sharks, my name is Sarah Apgar. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm the founder and CEO of FitFighter. I'm seeking $250,000 for 15% equity in the company. I'm an Iraq War veteran, women's rugby All-American from Princeton, volunteer wow. firefighter, spouse of a West Point grad and fellow Army vet, and mom of two gorgeous little girls. And I invite you to train like a hero, like our nation's bravest, with the most versatile and durable fitness product on the market. The Fit Fighter Steel Hose. Made in the USA from real fire hose, recycled steel shot, and brass grommets. The steel hose is both a free weight and a resistance tool with countless grips on the hose itself. Under, over, mixed grip, and single arm. And eight ways to layer on the body, at the neck, chest, elbow, shoulder, side, hip, back and wow. ankle. I know. <laughs> the Steel Hose system is a complete full body strength, power, and conditioning program. We can work basic strength for your everyday mission, hauling gear and kids, train for rotational sports, and finally, grip strength for climbing your golf swing, Robert, or the mayonnaise jar. <laughs> <laughs> All that without switching our tool and safe for our floors, toddlers, and toes. Wow. Sharks, with your help, this product and training system will bring the strength and spirit of public service to households, training centers, and athletic fields nationwide and turn every American watching into the next fit fighter. Wow. Yeah. Fabulous. So that the question is, are you ready too? Because I need a team. So it's your turn. If you'll stand up on your feet and join me, Sharks. Awesome. So you each have a steel hose set in front of you. I recommend my favorite hose is the one I worked with, the 15. The 15. Okay. Mark's just yeah. bragging. What are we going to oh, do with you, it? Mark. <laughs> I can't do it with my head, is but I'll okay try anything else. it okay for me to do the little well, one? Well, Mark's doing 35. Why did I know that was going to happen? So what I want you to do is just stand strong and tall for me, and I want you to lift that above your head. It's going to feel a little different than weights you're used to. Put your arm out to the side. It does feel okay? different. All I want you to do is come down to your shoulder and squat. As you do that, press everything back up, OK? Optional, you can come down, up, and over your head and get a sense for how soft and malleable that is. Excellent. Let's bring it out front. So you're going to come side to side. Okay, Ugh. that one's gonna be hard with the 35. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, and then final move, <laughs> optional, underhand, and you're gonna just give it a flip. There you go. <laughs> awesome job, uh. Sharks. Your first steel hose moves ever. Thank you so much. Love to talk some oh, more. Oh, jeez, I broke the table. <laughs> did you really? I did. Sarah. Oh, Robert. Why is the experience so positive? Because it does feel much more enjoyable oh. than the weights. Why, why, why is that? That yeah. was so hard. As I mentioned, it's made from real fire hose and the original intent was to mimic a fire hose charged with water. When I joined my volunteer uh. fire department, I noticed there was a gap between the fitness training in the gym and what really happened out there on the fire ground. The obvious place to start was how to mimic charged hose without pulling hose off the trucks, charging it on the hydrant with water. Once we had prototyped this in the firehouse, I then went to the FDNY Training Academy, the premier institution for training in the world for firefighters. And I walked into the fitness director's office. I said, I've got something special for you to see. And there was a moment of magic. He immediately agreed. And the FDNY was my first major client Good on our you. fire service yeah. side. I want to understand two things. Mm -hmm. One, what did you do in the military? Mm -hmm. And number two, why did you join to be a volunteer firefighter? When I was looking at college, the ROTC scholarship was an option to pay tuition to Princeton. And so I left college and went straight into the military as a second lieutenant. And after nine months of training, was on a charter aircraft to Mosul to support the 101st Airborne Division's reconstruction of Northern Iraq. So I was a 23-year-old platoon leader, and my youngest soldier, I lost my youngest soldier under my command. He was 19 at the time. And I remember that night 
huddling my platoon up around me and kneeling down in the center. And I just thought, this is, this is the moment. This is one of the most important moments of my life, that leadership moment to get us through. So when I left the service, I really, there was something really powerful about that community and camaraderie um, that I missed. And I vowed that I would always work to honor the memory of that soldier that I lost. And so I did my MBA and I was um, also pregnant with my first baby girl. And I was feeling like this desire to have the camaraderie back. I thought that joining the local fire, volunteer fire department would be a great way to just keep that thread of public service in my life. Where did you find time to spend two years doing an MBA? So I did my MBA at Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth. You are such an underachiever. <laughs> you do women proud. How much have you raised? I launched the company with 210,000 in friends and family funding. Okay. And that's uh, 50K of my own money. Also, importantly, in terms of the scalability of our business, I launched a production partnership with Sorenex Exercise Equipment in May. Sorenex is one of the largest and most well-respected exercise equipment manufacturers in the country and is a contract for the United States Army to provide the equipment for the new Army Combat Fitness Test. We have the perfect tool to train soldiers. So I intend to generate the enterprise value in this company by selling institutionally to the military, to the fire service. Let's get into the business about what your distribution strategy is. We had $45,000 in sales proving the concept in the B2B market. Last like, who year. Who did you sell that to? Last year. Trainers, coaches, and small boutique okay, gyms. Okay, so you're talking about a variety of different markets there. So your $45,000 was for what period? Mm -hmm. That was from July through the end of 2019. That's all your sales all in? That was all the sales 000. all in, okay. correct. Okay, so here we are in So here we are January 1st. I was lining up the Sorenex partnership so that we could be ready to scale to the future. And during this pandemic, that B2B market was effectively shut down completely. Right. We decided, well, what looks to be the way that we can scale the company forward is to pivot and to build a home uh, direct-to-consumer brand. What are your sales since you made that pivot? We immediately in April and May timeframe had $40,000 in sales. Wow. So in, in just those 10 weeks. That's great. And how so, did you get those what customers? You, what did were you, you doing, spend videos? digitally? Did you start trying different ads on Facebook? We did. And when we did that, we launched an iOS app that has a 150 plus movement library that's developed by my training partners who are the best in the business. We launched also a live online training platform program. So I'm following you. Do you charge like, for it? I'm watching you. Mm -hmm. I'm in my home. Mm -hmm. I'm watching my video and it's you doing yes. it with me. And what do I pay for that? Right, so the app model is that it's a free download. It's free. So if That's... I'm understanding correctly, the app is designed to create demand. And then you want people to download it for free so that they can order these from right. you. Right, and then we do have a $19 okay. a month option where you can also then have And complete, how many subscribers do you have for that? Complete workouts. We have 302. So let's walk through, because there's a lot of bouncing around here. Yes. Right? And I Sorry, understand that COVID. I'm trying to pull it together here. With, with COVID, right, everybody's reacting and trying yeah. to be agile. So I get that. That's, yeah. But Sarah, you're all over the map, and you're not helping yourself with that. OK? You're drowning in opportunity. It's hard to be in a business and do one thing well. Mm -hmm. It's harder to be in a business and try to do multiple things you know, one minute you say you want to sell to firefighters and the Department of Defense. The next minute you have, you know, live online and you're building your community. The next second you want to work through your trainers and everybody's working this together and you want to direct to consumer. You can't take on 15 battles and expect to succeed in any of them. Hopefully you'll get a deal because you need help. Just going on the path that you're going, you are going to fail at this, right? So for those reasons, I'm out. I'm in this space with PRX. We had to go through the same pivot. Yeah. The digital pivot works. Yeah. And, and our sales are up 400% selling direct to consumers. But for me, I'm not going to invest because I'd be competing with myself in customer acquisition. I'm out. Look, you're one of the most impressive human beings we've ever seen. But the business side of it falls apart a little. When you came out, I said, oh my God, she is killing it. She's selling subscription classes online mm -hmm. and 
this is nothing, I'm paying for a subscription. But mm -hmm. yet your model seems to be, mm -hmm. let's sell a lot of these and use the subscription to somehow promote it. What I've learned in this industry is you gotta move really fast. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't moved online already, I don't know if you can make that transition at this point. I'm out. Sarah, listen to me. Okay. Um, Everything they said is actually true. You're ridiculously impressive. You need to focus more. But I think you have incredible potential. I think your presentation can become something that inspires people. I think you can do something really, really big. And it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of focus. I'm willing to take that journey with you because I'm just so inspired by your story. So I'm going to give you one of two offers, depending on whether Lori wants to join me. Okay. Um, if she wants to join me, you get two sharks, 30% for $250,000. What would you offer her if it was just you alone? 25% myself. Sarah, I'm not going to join Daniel on the offer. I feel that he's a partner that can bring a lot to the table for you. I think it's a better deal for you. OK. I'm sorry. I'm out. OK, so, so you're, Sarah, you're you have offer an offer is okay. over here. 25% for $250,000. I think that's a generous number given where you're at in terms of dollars, but it's okay. knowing where you're gonna head. Yeah, um, I'm super grateful. So I'd like to counter at 250,000 for 20%, and it's a done deal, and <laughs> let's go I, do I it. I respect the toughness of your counter, but the yeah. answer is no, because I'm already stretching myself to 25%. That already factors you in guys, the okay. leadership be a great partner. Uh, potential. Co-captain Daniel Abetsky, woo! <laughs> awesome! <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. I'm so psyched. Congratulations. I mean, wow. And great feedback. I can't wait to work with you. Me too. Let me just... Yeah. <laughs> with a partner like Daniel, we can build a strategy for the future. As a woman-owned, veteran-owned company, young girls and women will look up to us and they will know what's possible. Next up is a product to take your workouts to the next level. <laughs> wow. Hello, Sharks. My name is Tony the Black Stallion, a Adeneron from Houston, Texas. And my ask is $100,000 for 10% of my business, the Aqua Boxing Glove. But before I start, I need to prep for one of Mr. Wonderful's royalty debt deals. <laughs> I know how you like to roll. He knows what he's doing. Us. Yeah, yeah. Yo, wow, Kevin. Yeah. For, forget the bag. Yeah. Go Is right that there. Kevin? Yeah. That, that would really hurt, wow. Mr. Wonderful. Yeah. Woosa. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now I'm ready to go. Now I'm ready to go. As a professional boxer for the last 16 years, I've been hitting the heavy bag and cracking skulls in the ring. As a result, I lost four years of my professional boxing prime due to hand injuries from the constant impact. I knew there had to be a better way to train. So I created the Aqua Boxing Gloves. The Aqua Boxing Gloves are the only boxing gloves in the world that do not require a heavy bag or impact to get an intense, dynamic wow. resistance workout. And they're so simple to use. All you have to do is add water, strap them up, and you're ready to train. Wow. 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 I'm talking improving speed. <laughs> Cardio. Not to mention, burn fat and build muscle. It's a total body training tool all in one. Most of all, you could train anywhere, anytime, without the annoying bag and chain. Just add water, baby. It's the bachelor of all boxing gloves. Now, who's ready to sweat? This is heavy. Yes. How much does this weigh? So when it's empty, it weighs about 2.5 pounds, but you can fill it up as heavy as six pounds. So the hard question is, how do you get the second one on when you're by yourself? Boxers would just bite that Velcro strap and pull yeah, it across. Pull it over with your mouth, yeah. and, and Kevin should know. I see him on yeah. Instagram boxing all the time. So all the, all the gloves that are pretty much the same size? Yes, yeah, so my goal is, you know, with investment today, 
we can go ahead and create a different size. So right now, this is for the average size hand to the larger hand. I want to do one that's for average to the smaller size hand. Mm. You know, I, honestly, I feel myself getting faster already. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh my oh, God, oh, I nice. had a flashback. Nice. I had a flashback. <laughs> So what do you sell these for and what do they cost you to make? So I'm going to be selling them for $199 retail. Going to, so you're not selling them yet? Yeah, so I'm not selling them yet. We just launched a Kickstarter last month. We did $40,000 in sales with minimal marketing. And what did you sell them for in Kickstarter and have you delivered them yet? On Kickstarter, we did them for $99 um, and we have not delivered them yet. I went ahead and took some samples and tested them on athletes and my regular fitness clients because I own a boxing gym. So I had them just cycle through and test them and test them to give me any reason why somebody would need to return them, get our hand sizes down and all that good stuff. Tony, what do they cost to make? So they cost us right now $50 to make and we can get this cost down another 30% when we get volume up and we get more molds. To me, there is some satisfaction, I would think, in hitting a bag. Right? Yes. Like that feeling of like, I yes. don't know. It's a hassle. It's a hassle to get a bag set up in your house or you got to go to a gym. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. But yeah. Kevin, yeah. how or did you're that traveling? feel? Kevin, when you had it on, how it's did a, that it's feel? It's a workout. It's a workout for sure. And what I think, I think that this is more of a fitness product right. it's for not a boxing your training. actual yeah. boxer, right? This is more about the person that wants the workout that comes from boxing That's without right. having access to said heavy bags. Like or, a weight bar uh, or yes. something. Yes, uh, 100%. So what's your background? How did you get involved in this? Yeah, so, you know, I'm a first generation American. My, my parents came from Nigeria to give us a better life. It was actually very hard for me transitioning into becoming a boxer because, you know, when you come from overseas and you have, you know, people who immigrate and give up everything to get here, they don't want to see you taking major risks. So my parents are like, you're crazy. You know, they're, they're seeing backyard fighting on TV and they're thinking that's what I'm doing. Speaking of boxing, you said that you actually have a boxing gym. It's a business. Yes. Now, those kinds of businesses got wiped out during the pandemic. What yes. happened to yours? So we, we took a big hit. Last year was one of the toughest years in business and personally that I've ever had. Uh, you know, when, when the pandemic hit, my, my gym shut down. So I pivoted my business. I started driving from house to house, going to my clients. You know, I would stand at the bottom of the driveway and I'd be calling out one, twos, combinations, all that good stuff, <laughs> good you know? You. And every day I would watch my clients. And I was like, I, I got to figure something out because even if I wanted to travel with that, I couldn't. Even if I had a truck, I mean, it. it so that's where I came up with so the this idea. This product was born out of the pandemic. That's basically what happened. You know, Tony, I love the hustle. I see that. I get it. But I'm your guy, if anybody's going to do I'm it. I'm trying to figure out, you know, when I do a Shark Tank deal, wh where can I add the leverage? This is not a product category that I have momentum in anywhere. That's the only reason I'm not doing this. I'm out. I completely understand. I appreciate the respect. You know, you're right in the beginning. Yeah. You have a lot farther to go. You're going to get there. But there's so many things I don't know that um, it's not the right investment for me. I wish you good luck. I'm sorry, I'm out. Thank you, that's all right. Look, I, I like I the like product. The challenge is, as a sole proprietorship, where it's your business, you don't have to scale a lot, right? You could sell a thousand of these at 200 bucks a pop every quarter and make good money, right? And that's a good business. But that's not a good investment. Right, because in order to get it to scale, it's gonna take a lot of money, a lot of packaging, and you're not close to that yet. So for those reasons, I'm out. Okay, I appreciate it. So this is my cup of tea. I, I feel like it's not my belly wick at all. So simply because of my lack of knowledge, I am out. Totally understand, thank you. Tony, I mean, look, the hustle behind it, amazing. Um, I gotta be honest, man, you know, boxing is always about the experience for me. It's always about the feeling of, oh my God, I'm in there, I'm hitting something. Hitting whether the, it's yeah. the mitts, whether it's the bag. One question. If you have to train right now, I know you love boxing, mm -hmm. and you travel a lot, how would you train right now? I'm going to shadow box. Why not travel with those gloves? For me to go and, and take this with me yeah. and strap up and then say, okay, you know, now I'm ready. This seems like a lot for okay. me. 
That's just, that's me personally. You can get a better workout with those in 15 minutes than you could with shadow boxing in, in one hour. I, I can see a guy I like can't you. I personally lead, bring value I can to see that. a guy like you leading the charge on this. If you put these gloves on, I can see a million other people putting these gloves on. Tony, why I, not? If I can't passionately speak on your product, then I'm not the right partner. Your partner should be able to stand side by side with you and match your level of energy. If I can't do that, then I'm of no value to you. I'm not the right partner for you in this particular space. Understood. That's why I'm out. Okay. I appreciate it. Good luck, Thank Tony. Thank you all so much. You'll Good get luck, there. man. All right. Good luck, Good luck Tony. Uh, the Sharks definitely missed an opportunity, but it is what it is. I'm gonna continue, I'm a fighter. That's what fighters do. You get knocked down, you get back up. But I don't even feel like I got knocked down today. Shoot, I'm, I'm still standing, baby. Next up is a better version of a ubiquitous workout necessity. Hey Sharks, I'm Nate Laurie, and I'm from Santa Barbara, California. My company is Brazen Life, and I'm seeking 225,000 in exchange for 10% of my company. When I played in the NFL, I took a lot of hits. <laughs> <laughs> Not today, Tom. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom Hopkins, Nate's business partner, just uh, trying to keep him on his toes. As a professional football player, taking hits was an everyday occurrence. I love football, but my back? Not so much. Foam rolling was a lifesaver for my career. It helped me keep my focus on playing and not being stuck in the training room waiting for treatment. Well, look, they're bulky, and they're a pain to travel with. That's why I set out to create something better. I wanted to make the world's most affordable foam roller that doesn't suck. This is <laughs> the Morph. It is the world's first collapsible foam roller. In an instant, you can pull it out of a backpack, a carry-on, a small gym bag, pop it open, and be giving your body so much needed TLC. The patented surface texture is perfect at releasing knots and flushing toxins from the muscles. When you're done, you collapse back down, and you're on the go. So Sharks, which of you wants to roll with us? <laughs> Would anyone, anyone cool. like to go hey, and give it a try? It's intriguing because, you cool. know, I do that? roll. There is a market for this, no question about it. In our locker room, we must have 350 different rollers. And I bet your trainers and your coaching staff are packing big boxes when they go to away games. How does that feel, Mark? It feels like, you know, a foam roller with spikes or whatever they're yeah. called. What those nubs are is they do a really good job at helping you pinpoint knots in the muscles and really help you to release those. So what? to collapse it, what you want to do is you want to locate these two push symbols on either side and push firmly all the way down. There yep. it goes. That's cool. You can right put down. it back in your backpack or carry on. So up to you guys all kind That's of... That's pretty <laughs> cool the way it just pops open. We spent a lot so of you... time developing the product and making Pass it extremely user-friendly. Thank you. Mr. Wonderful. So what Tom is oh, handing you, you out now is your own morph. The skins are removable, washable sleeves. There you go. And That's back pretty down. clever. Nate, what team did you play for? So I started off in Tampa, and then I played for the Saints and the Buccaneers, and then the Bengals. Go Bucs! I played Go Buccaneers. Did you design this? That's my design, yes. And you injured yourself? I did. So uh, in my third year in the NFL, I was with the Saints, and Unfortunately, I had this nagging back injury that just kept getting worse and worse throughout the season. Uh, I kept fighting through it because I didn't want to let pain get in the way of my dreams. But uh, it wasn't sustainable, and as the team went on to the NFC Championship game that year, I was actually laying at home recovering from a spine surgery. So as I got into the recovery process, I became devoted. I used the foam roller, and I, I don't think I would have played another five years of professional football. Really? I wanted to find something that I could easily travel with, and so I went to a local uh, hardware store, built a very rudimentary prototype in the garage. When it didn't collapse under my massive 260 pounds of tight end weight, I knew I had the opportunity to make something that was really <laughs> so, cool. So to be clear, you think that the use of a foam roller helped you stay in the NFL for five more years? Uh, absolutely. Wow. Is there anything else close to this on the market? Is there another collapsible foam roller? So there's nothing out there on the market currently. Do you have a patent? It is patent pending. So we're also patent pending in Europe, in Canada, and Australia. Has anybody knocked it off yet? No. No? No. How much do you sell them for? What do they cost? How many have you sold the whole routine? So we retail these for $68. Um, so they cost right now for our first production run, $26.75. Ooh, that's $26.75 landed? Yep. How much is a typical foam roller? 
A typical foam roller is going to run you around forty dollars. Wait a second. There's lots of cheaper foam rollers. Than There's yeah, lots of cheaper foam cheap, rollers, yeah, the, but you're the buying cheap those. ones that yeah, they break yeah. down. You're buying them a yeah, couple times. Yeah, but those times. are so, 15, 20 bucks, yeah, right? 15, People don't know the difference, right? We've already identified ways that we're going to be able to get that down to around twenty dollars by the okay, end of the year. Okay, there we go. In this month, we're going to do fifty thousand in sales. We're projecting 2.4 million over the next 12 Whoa. months with a 20% net profit. So we're profitable this month. What is it specifically that you need? Right, so your name value is would be great. You own a, a professional sporting goods team. I own a, a team A sporting too. goods team, yeah. <laughs> yeah Just, I own so, part of an NBA team. Sarah, I own the, what team? The Hawks. You go, girl. <laughs> so are you making them overseas or are you making them here? We make them at our manufacturing facility in Romania. Wait a minute, um, wait a minute. You own the manufacturing facility in Romania. Yeah, so my wife's father-in-law owns a precision parts manufacturing company. He had a lot of extra square footage in his so you factory. you trust them, you Nate, have a relationship. your wife's father-in-law is your dad. <laughs> yeah. OK. <laughs> I, I, maybe I missed Because he's, wife... he's owning that sporting goods team, and it's getting confusing. <laughs> I'm just going to tie my tongue and just walk away now. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. My, my wife's father. You, you have flexibility on this 10%, because I don't think you're worth $2.25 right now. I think that the valuation is fair. We do project $2.4 million over the next 12 months. We're not even on Amazon yet. Amazon is by far the biggest distributor of foam rollers out there. I'm gonna get the ball rolling. I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> I love this, so I'm just gonna really offer money. What's your offer? Two hundred and twenty-five thousand for fifteen percent. Ooh. Okay, I'll do the deal for two hundred twenty-five thousand for twenty percent because one video of me in my underwear rolling <laughs> is gonna blow <laughs> this thing right out of the water. <laughs> it could also put you out of business. So. Anybody else? Mark, what are you doing? I'm listening. Of course. We're listening, we're listening we're too. Curious. We're listening too. Carry on. Let's hear your offers, ladies. I am going to say you guys have a lot of challenge ahead of you because this is a demonstration product. I mean, I didn't have any money to advertise. My moment was being on Oprah. So this is kind of your Oprah moment. You get a foam roller. You, you get, get a foam roller. Everybody, everybody gets a foam roller. roller. Gets a foam roller. <laughs> but here, listen. Your price is a little concerning. Your margin's really concerning. But the product is so unique, so I'm very interested. But and I want to hear is. what Mark has to say. As do I. <laughs> Mark's out. Mark's out? There you have it. Oh. Mark! Thank you, Mark. Can we ask you why you're out? Doesn't matter. Um, I am very well versed in the infomercial world. We just did our Simply Fit board. I happen to like that Sarah has a team. Between the two of us, we could probably bring a lot to the table in different ways. I know what I can do, and that is blow up product in a demonstrable way. And Sarah could help in the arena of sports. So we could team up together. Yes. And offer you 225 at 20%. Oh. But you're getting too sharp. Oh. So it's 10% ten percent. I would definitely do Mr. Wonderful's deal over that. Now we just we need one Mr. Wonderful. We need to know Sarah is interested. Sarah, you want to come in on this? Yes. Okay, guys, you have three offers on the table. Your so, other two offers. So do you You're want two sharks for 225, 20% of your business? Or do you want Would you guys be willing to match Damon's offer? 225 for 15%. Why would it we match his it, offer when you're getting two of us yeah, versus it one? It makes it harder. If you so think two answer, sharks are important, watch no. this. Shazam, I'm in with Damon. The answer is no, sharks. and we <laughs> just like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right? OK. All right. Oh, uh, horrifying thought, him in his underwear so, on the roller. So, but we still I want 20%. 20%. I agree. And by the way, guys, I am pretty integrated in CrossFit. But if it's two sharks you want, you got it. You've got Mr. Wonderful with Damon, or you have the Sharkettes. You've got to make a decision, guys. One shark is out. Nate and Tom have two offers on the table for their collapsible foam roller company, Brazen. Lori and Sarah have offered $225,000 for a 20% stake, and Kevin and Damon have also offered $225,000 for 20%. I'm going to make one more counter proposal. Would you do $250 for the 20%? So $25,000 more? Why are you asking that? Because for a lot of reasons, the cash is going to help our business. 
and it's going to help us to grow the business. Um, and it also, we, you know, we came in with the valuation in mind that's already so been done. We'll do that deal. We'll do that deal. We'll take that. We'll take that. Hold on. We'll take that. Hold on. Not so fast. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's clarify. We're matching the offer. Who are you offering that to? Them or We'll match the offer. We've just matched that offer. Can we step back for a second? Just a moment. Guys. You guys, we have we have two outstanding Go offers ahead. on the Step table. Back. I think we. We're going with the Sharkettes. <laughs> Boom shakalaka. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Kevin. Fortunately, you're gonna be in your underwear because you just got spanked. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. So smart.